From Radio America, it's Neil Asbury's Made in America, the show that explores American industry large and small and promotes American-made products everywhere. Put Neil Asbury's Made in America to work for you. A very big welcome to you today. I'm your host, Neil Asbury, together with co-host Dr. Rich Rothman. Well, we're very pleased to have on the show Lloyd Chapman from the American Small Business League, together with his attorney, Carl Olson. Lloyd Welcome to Made in America. Thanks for having us on your show. So you just won a very, very important ruling um, about small businesses not getting their fair share. How important is this ruling, and, and what will happen from this point forward? Well, what we've exposed is that the Pentagon created a program in 1989 called the Comprehensive Subcontracting Plan Test Program. It had two elements, the elimination of all transparency and the elimination of any penalties for prime contractors for not complying with their small business goals. And it was a test program in 89. They've now been testing whether eliminating transparency and penalties for noncompliance is going to help small businesses for about 30 years, and they plan to test it until 2027, which I think is you know ludicrous. So the notion of seeing if eliminating transparency and penalties are going to help small business uh, is, is just absurd. But the notion of testing it for uh, over 30 years, to me, is absolutely insane. So what we've uncovered is, as opposed to the 23% that American small businesses should be getting under the law, they're probably getting at the most 3%. And, um, you know, about... A few years ago, the Senate Small Business Committee came out with a study that says for every 1% contracts of small businesses go up, it'll create 100,000 net new jobs. So the law says small businesses are supposed to get 23. All the lawsuits I've won for 30 years and all the experts, the top experts in the country that I work with, all agree that it looks like small businesses are getting no more than 3%. So if we could get small businesses the full 23%, According to the Senate study, it would create 2 million net new jobs a year in America. So the government's only claiming to be creating 2.5 million new jobs, which I suspect is highly inflated. So if, if, if Carl and I can prevail and win more of these cases and force the government to give small businesses the full 23 percent, it, it, would, it would virtually double the number of net new jobs in this country. And I, I'm not an economist, but I would have to think it would have a significant uh, impact on cutting unemployment. Well, that's amazing, Rich. I mean, <laughs> more than two million jobs, and and, and 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 these are really good-paying jobs. I mean, they're defense. Well, they're, yeah, jobs. they're high technical jobs, and this is what we right. want in this country. So these are not you know, minimum wage jobs. These are jobs working for you know high tech uh, companies across the country that are involved in um, you know a variety of industries that are that are you know growing and um, that give people you know really great-paying jobs and careers. By the way. Careers. You know, this is interesting because we've been hearing also, Neil, and we've talked about this on the show for, for years now, that there, there, there may not be enough people, the right people, to fulfill these really high technological jobs. I mean, how does that work out right now in the industry? Are, are we in good shape? Well, you know what? Um, you know, we're here in California, and... Um, It it doesn't seem to be a problem here in California because so many people are coming to California. But um, I don't think the real problem is there's not enough people to fill the jobs. The real problem is I I, I had a conversation with a former inspector general for the Small Business Administration a few years ago, and he told me that the United States government's small business program is smoke and mirrors. And I've come to see that there's a lot of truth in that. So as opposed to this... uh, program that Congress passed, you know, during the Eisenhower administration, it's been, I would say, secretly, quietly dismantled uh, a little bit at a time. I'll tell you something that I, that I don't think most people understand. The Small Business Act is the largest economic stimulus program for the American people in history. It dwarfs, for example, you remember TARP, the American Reinvestment Recovery Act? Oh, yeah. Sure, oh, that, was, that was a good one. Yeah, they, they allocated $1 billion to small businesses. Under the um, American Re- Reinvestment Recovery Act, it was $2 billion. Well, the Small Business Act, if it were implemented, would be $350 billion a year in perpetuity. So compare that to the $1 billion, the one-time shot $1 billion 
from uh, TARP and the $2 billion one-time shot from the American Re- Reinvestment Recovery Act compared to $350 billion every year in perpetuity. And um, wow, that's uh, you talked I mean, about that's Eisenhower's military industrial complex speech. Uh, had you heard uh, about Rumsfeld's speech the day before 9-11? No. Have you seen that? No, he said the same no I should because he was one of my heroes. I thought the guy was outrageous. He said the same thing on September 10th. Uh, you can find it on the Internet. And uh, he talked about, um, at that time, uh, $2.5 trillion, uh, could not be accounted for at the Pentagon. And in, I think it was uh, the summer of 2016, the Pentagon Inspector General put out a report that said they couldn't account for $6.5 trillion. So, but Rumsfeld, uh, he said, uh, I can't remember his exact uh, thing that he said, but he said something like that America's... Uh, biggest enemy is the uh, Pentagon bureaucracy. But you can find that on the Internet. Um, I think if you Google Rumsfeld 2.5 trillion unaccounted for, you can that'll pop up. It's also my website, ASBL.com and uh, LloydChapman.com. You can go to either one of those websites and uh, find that video. But... Um, and, and one Lloyd, of the Lloyd, things... Uh, uh, Lloyd, uh, just stop there for a second. We've got to k- take a quick break. Uh, And we're going to be right back. But uh, we're on with Lloyd Chapman from the American Small Business League and his attorney, Carl Olson. Uh, We're talking about small business and and how they can get and participate more in these very, very important contracts and deliver incredible value to the American taxpayer. Stay with us. You don't want to miss it. Made in America. Welcome to Made in America. I'm your host, Neil Asbury, together with co-host Dr. Rich Rothman. And we are together with Lloyd Chapman from the American Small Business League and his attorney, Carl Olson. And they have just won a very, very important court ruling to ensure that American small businesses gets their share, which has been approved by Congress in, in what they should be doing and what they should be getting in, in specifically in this case, defense contracts, but it's, it's really right across all government, um, procurement. I mean, why isn't American small businesses participating at a much greater level? Uh, as we've just heard from Lloyd, uh, if American small businesses was getting what they should, just within the Pentagon, we would be talking about incredible amounts of jobs, two million jobs, two million jobs. I mean, good paying jobs. Jobs that uh, you know people can raise a family on, you know, well, enjoy jobs their we American dream, we lost. own a home, yeah, yes, in manufacturing jobs. Yeah, that's what we've been pushing. Hey, we talk about bringing our jobs back from Asia or from other countries around the world. Why don't we just get our jobs back from the Pentagon? You know, boy, what a concept that would be. So, Lloyd. Or Carl, what happens next uh, with this lawsuit? And you know, how do you enforce? We we should be getting twenty three percent. You're only getting three percent. You know, twenty percent. I mean, it's on the books. This is what's supposed to be done. It's not getting done. It just seems to be black and white. How do you force this? I I think one of the ways you enforce it is you shine a light on it and you try to get transparency and uh, one of the things that we found out uh, in this case is that the government joined uh, with the defense contractors to try and keep the public in the dark in fact uh, at at one of the hearings in our case uh, the judge said that the government was acting like a wholly owned subsidiary of Lockheed and, and you had uh, depositions in the case where there were like seven people from uh, the government and from Lockheed appearing, all to try and keep the public in the dark. And, and, uh, and but then what would the be their Supreme incentive to do that? Why would, why would the, the government ruling. do that? I mean, is, why would they do that? Why would they be so much in the tank for Lockheed? It's crazy. I mean, most uh, businesses, if you have a client, uh, if your client tells you to jump, you say, how high? But in this case, uh, 
the government is the client and, and Lockheed's getting, you know, $35 billion a year from them. But you have the opposite dynamic. When Lockheed tells the government to do something, the government says how high. So it, it's crazy the extent to which uh, the Defense Department is completely in the tank, as you say, for the defense contractors and tries to uh, to help them uh, keep the public in the dark. And, and what we got in, in this case despite a, a ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court that was kind of in favor of big business, um, we got a ruling from the judge that said that when there are compliance reviews uh, by the government, that has to be made public. And, and what we got is uh, a compliance review that said a Lockheed report was not accurate. We also got uh, documents in this case that showed that there was a, quote, huge gap between uh, their goals for hiring small businesses and their actual performance. And, and it was very interesting because, you know, when the government comes out with a report that says they did well, they issue press releases about it. But uh, when there are reports that don't show that, then they fight like the devil to keep the public in the dark and to keep the public from finding out information about it. So, so let me ask you a question. The American I mean, Small Business League uh, is really a unique organization, and, and they are the ones that are fighting for the interests of small business. Even, so uh, doesn't you know, it strike you strange? Doesn't it strike you strange that we have, you know, Lockheed really controlling? They're the controlling level of the leverage and what's going on out there, and they're trying to keep some of this this quiet. Monies disappear. Lockheed gets contracts. The government, you just said, jumps as high as it can when Lockheed says, "Can you just jump for us a little bit?" And and this, I mean, is this going to wind up as a Netflix movie in two years? I hope so. I mean, you got when you have big bucks so. like this and, okay. and globalization yeah. like that. And, yeah. and money's disappearing, and contracts are being let. Man, I got to tell you, but the first thing I would think is, you know, who's making the money? Uh, it's the big defense contractors and small business. Uh, you know, is, is, as Lloyd said, is what should be getting the money. Here's something, by the way, that I want all your listeners to hear. Right now, in America, ninety-seven percent of all federal spending for acquisitions is going to less than 1% of U.S. firms. So the Census Bureau, by the way, says 99% of all U.S. firms have less than 500 employees, 98% have less than 100, and 87% have less than uh, 10, uh, no, less than 20, all right? So I'll go with the 99%. So 99% of all U.S. firms have less than 500 employees. That means only 1% has over 500 employees. And right now, today, while we're talking, 97% of all federal spending goes to less than 1% of the firms. And according to the U.S. Census Bureau data, that 1% has not created one net new job since 1980. And many of them have paid no federal income tax for over a decade. I found a story last night. I think you can Google um, GE pays no federal income tax. And there's a story, I think it's on CBS about 18 profitable companies that pay no income tax. So think of what the economic repercussions are going to be down the road if we continue to spend 97% of our tax dollars with less than 1% of the companies that haven't created one net new job since 1980 and aren't paying their taxes. I say it's going to cause a complete economic collapse at some point in time. I don't know if it's five years or 10 years or 20 years, but um, I think it's going to be a, a, a huge uh, problem and uh, the sad thing is, it's really hard to get the story out. We're thrilled to, to be on your show today because it's very hard to get this, uh, this story out in the media. Yeah, one of the things that we discovered uh, in our case, uh, you know, we asked the Lockheed witnesses, you know, has, has the Washington Post or the New York Times made Freedom of Information Act requests for this, and they said no. Only the American Small Business League is fighting this battle because it's stuff that uh, it's 
hard to understand on a granular level, but, uh, you know, the ASBL really did expose uh, how the big defense contractors are gaming the system. And Hey, Lloyd, um, unfortunately, uh, we're out of time. I mean, Lloyd and, and Carl, I mean, wow, keep up uh, the good fight. I mean, you guys are doing tremendous good for our country. And the, and the metrics that you just mentioned about, you know, uh, the jobs, the lack of jobs being created, how much taxes are being paid, uh, the loss of two million good paying jobs. Uh, all, you know, because of this this collusion between our government and the Pentagon, I mean, is totally, totally unacceptable. It's it's totally un-American. This should not be happening. Hey, Lloyd, uh, Lloyd Chapman from the American Small Business League and Carl Olson, uh, the attorney uh, for the American Small Business League. We really appreciate you being on the show, but unfortunately, we're out of time. But we'll check back in with you real soon. We want to keep up that fight. We'll, we'll report about it. You do it. We'll report it. Thank you very much. Thanks Thanks for having having me on. More with Dr. Rothman and I just in a moment. Still much more to talk about. Made in America. 